Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, let's take a look at five tips we can use for adjusting and editing the water in our photographs. You know, from landscape lakes and oceans to puddles and reflections in urbex settings to even water droplets and macro, as photographers, we may be dealing with water on a regular basis. So let's jump into some techniques and workflows that we can use to ensure that water in our scene looks exactly like we want it to. So inside of Photo Raw here, my first tip for modifying and adjusting water in your photography is to use the photo filter inside of effects. So let's go into the effects tab, we'll add a filter and we'll add the photo filter. The photo filter is an awesome filter for water in photography because you can use it to warm things up, cool things down, you can use it to modify the color tone in specific areas of your image. And it also has this handy polarizer slider built in that you can use to enhance contrast. So inside of the photo filter here, let me just turn this off real quick and just sort of explain what I'm sort of aiming to do with it. So with the photo filter here, I really like to modify the foreground and background color tones independently of one another. And it's really easy to do that inside of the photo filter. So let's bring in sort of a warm color tone to the bottom here, and we'll bring in, you know, just a nice sort of cool tone to the top section, just to add in a little bit more oomph and interest to this water scene. So let's enable that photo filter. Let's go into the filter type, and we're going to choose by color here. By color is going to incorporate two different colors that we can use to tone our foreground and background. Now we can also use it to modify the left and right side of the image independently, but with images like this, such as landscapes, foreground and background is a really nice sort of setup for color toning and a little bit of contrast into the scene. So with our photo filter here, let's go in first to these two different colors, the one that's modifying the top and the one that's modifying the bottom. Let's just choose a different color here. Let's choose a nice sort of bluish green color there. And then let's choose a bit more of a red color for the bottom section. Now to sort of show these in action here, let's just go down to the mode section here and let's choose clean highlights. Now, depending on your image and what you're modifying and sort of what style you're trying to go for, I'd recommend playing around with these different modes for the photo filter. Now the most popular ones happen to be the clean highlights and clean shadows here. And you can see they do sort of different things in blending the color in with those different sections of the photo. I'm going to leave it at clean highlights there. Now one thing I like to do also in this photo filter is adjust the positioning of that color transition. We can do that really easily with this distance slider here by just pulling on it up and down or to the left and right rather to determine where that photo filter sort of transition between colors happens. Now we can also modify that transition to make it a little bit sharper or more sort of blended and soft. I typically like to keep it softer around 15 to 20, but you can always sort of sharpen it up there by just pulling back on that transition slider. So this is looking great. I think the position is nice. Now, one thing about the photo filter here, it's most of the time just going to modify that color toning within your scene. But remember I mentioned the polarizing slider here. And with that, it's a really powerful tool for just blending in that color and adding in contrast as well. So if I'm using the photo filter, I typically also use this polarizer slider here to just fine tune that contrast within the scene. So if I turn this off and on now, we've got sort of a transition of different colors there. It's a little bit more contrasted. And the great thing about this photo filter is you can really fine tune that color and the saturation. So if you want a little bit more color in the sky, you can modify that amount there on that top color. If we want more color in the bottom section, we can add in a little bit more of that amount. And we can really sort of fine tune how that color is transitioned, how it looks on the scene, and how it's blended into the highlights and the shadows there. So let's turn this off and on here. 
and I'm really digging it. I think it's adding in just a lot of a lot more interest to the scene and a lot more oomph to the photograph. And this is really all just with this one filter there. My next tip for modifying and adjusting water in your photos is to use the glow filter selectively on the water in your image to bring in a nice silky soft look into it. So with this photograph here, I'm just going to pull up on the shadows a little bit, add in some contrast, and I'm just going to warm things up a little bit just before we start getting creative with the style. So looking a little cool, so we needed to warm it up the hair. So let's go into the effects tab. Let's add a filter here and let's add the glow filter. So with the glow filter, there's a ton of awesome options for the water here. So let's just zoom in and I can sort of show you it up close. So we're just sort of focusing on the in on the water here. So let's just go to the more menu and we'll just sort of go through these here. And depending on what you're going for in your photo, you can see it does a really awesome job at bringing in a nice sort of silky soft look into that water. Now I would recommend using a darker glow or a glow that sort of removes a bit of the brightness within the water because it can help just add into that silky soft look. And one of my favorites here is the Orton Here's a Who. So we're gonna choose that there. Now it looks great on the water. If we turn this off and on here, looking really great on the water, but a little bit too dark on the shadowy areas of the scene. So let's apply this selectively just to the water. To do that, I'm just going to simply brush it in. I'm gonna go to my masking options, I'll invert this, and then I'll use my masking brush here to just paint this into some of these areas that I want a little bit more sort of silky smooth softness. And so once I've painted in that glow there into the water, you can see if I turn this up and on, there's a really fantastic job of just sort of taming it down and again, just giving it that nice silky look. Now, one thing about the glow filter, because it is darkening things a bit, or at least this preset in the glow filter, go into your gear icon here and go down to these three sliders here and pull up on the shadow slider. That should help alleviate some of that, that exposure adjustment to those darker areas within the scene. And one thing I like to use along with the glow filter is dynamic contrast. So let's just copy that mask we created before. We'll add a filter. We'll add dynamic contrast. And I'm just going to use surreal just because it's a demo and I want you to see the difference here, but we'll just paste that mask that we brushed in earlier into the water and we want to invert that. So it's applied into the opposite directions. Now let's just lower that opacity quite a bit. And now if I zoom into that particular section there that I was looking at earlier, we have a little bit of detail there. And we also have a nice soft glow. My next tip for modifying and adjusting water in your photography is to dodge and burn with local adjustments so that you can adjust the brightness and darkness of specific areas of your photo. So with this image here, I'm just going to go into the on one neutral camera profile just to give it a little bit more life. And so I can see some of those darker details within the scene. And what we want to do first here is go into the local adjustments tab. Let's rename this adjustment burn sky. With our burn sky adjustment, we're going to be darkening our sky section. So let's grab our adjustable gradient here and let's use that linear bottom preset so that we apply it to the top section of the photo. We'll drop this down, position it, and we may just tighten up the feathering just a little bit there. So now with this sky there, you can see it's darkened quite a bit. We have a lot more detail and it's not so distracting for the viewer to focus in on the water. Let's fine tune that a little bit, add in some contrast and maybe a little bit more white just to make sure that there is a little bit of contrast between the bright and dark sections of that sky. 
So now let's add another adjustment and let's dodge the water. Dodge, i.e. brighten. So let's type in dodge here. Oops, that's not how you spell it. Dodge water. And let's now go in here. Let's add in maybe a quarter of a stop of exposure. Add in some contrast and we'll boost up the midtones. And I'm going to use my adjustment brush for this. And I can just brush this in to the water in the scene here. And you can see it gives it just a lot of life that it was sort of missing before. And remember when you're brushing, the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard are going to modify your brush size. So it's a really handy keyboard modifier if you're looking to quickly adjust that brush size within your scene. Maybe add in a little bit more contrast there. But you can see by adding in that dodge local adjustment into the foreground and then that other local adjustment in the background, we've sort of shifted the light so that it's brightening the sections that we need it to and it's darkening the sections that we need to be dim. My next tip for modifying water in your photography is to use split toning, especially in instances like this where we have a large tonal section of shadow and we have sort of a large tonal section of highlights and kind of midtones there. It's really easy to split tone the two and add in different colors to them. So let's go into the effects tab here. Let's add a filter and let's add the split tone filter. In the split tone filter, it's very similar to what we were doing with that bicolor mode in the photo filter. Except for in this instance, we're targeting specifically the highlight section and the shadow section of the photo. So in our highlights here, let's just go in here and choose sort of a red color. Warm things up a bit. Maybe make it a little more orange. Then let's go into our shadows color here and let's make it a little bit cooler. Nice dark blue there. You can see we've split toned it now and we now have our colors in the highlights and the shadows different from one another. Now we can always make them a bit more intense by pulling up on these amount sliders here. And then if you want to balance the two to incorporate a little bit more of the colors into different tones, you can modify this balance slider here. If I pull this to the left, it's going to incorporate more of the color that I chose for the shadows, so you can see it cools things down a bit more. And then if I pull this to the right, it's going to balance more of the highlight colors within the scene and incorporate more of those into the photo. So I sort of dig it like that. I think it looks pretty good. Another thing I wanted to mention here is just the mode section. You can use this to modify how that split toning is blended into your photo. So you can see here with normal or color or lighten or really any of these, it modifies drastically how it's blended into your scene. But with split toning, as you can tell, really awesome tool for just incorporating different colors into your highlights and shadows. My next tip for modifying and adjusting water in your photographs is to use the curves filter on reflections. So let's go to the effects tab, we'll add a filter and we'll add the curves filter. And the reason that I love the curves filter for reflections is because you can add in contrast really easily, you can brighten things up if you need to, and if you need to modify color, you can adjust that and fine tune it really easily as well. So real quick with the curves filter here, I'm just going to just drop a point down so that I can see it take effect. That way I can mask it into my foreground. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to grab my uh, masking bug. And I'll just drop this down here and ensure that it's targeting the bottom section of my scene here. I'll use this large handle to sort of place it. And then because I'm modifying large sort of tonal adjustments here, let's blend this in by pulling up on this perforated edge quite a bit. 
That way we're just applying this curves filter directly to our reflection there. So like I was saying earlier, it's really easy to adjust your reflection now once you've sort of masked it in. So let's say we want to incorporate a bit of contrast. Well, all we have to do is drop a couple points down. We'll just drop a point down near our shadow tones, pull that down a bit, drop another point down near our highlight midtones, and then we'll pull that up a bit. And now right away in our reflection, it's sort of dimmed down, it's added in contrast to it. And that way the viewer can sort of take its eye around the different sections of the photograph rather than being distracted by sort of a bright reflection there. Now, when it comes to adding in contrast or adjusting the curves filter with reflections, sometimes you may incorporate a bit of color into the scene that you don't want. So if I turn this off and on here, I can see it's incorporating sort of a, a cool or blue color tint down here. Well, let's go into our gear icon here. We'll go into our blending options. And if you don't want that color to be modified, just choose the luminosity blend mode. So let me just zoom in real quick and I'll, I'll sort of show you the difference here. So this is luminosity here. If we turn this off and on, it's just adjusting the tone, i.e. the exposure, contrast, things like that. Now, if I go back to normal, you can see it's adjusting that tone, it's adjusting the contrast, things like that, but it's also modifying a bit of that color. And so if I go back to luminosity, it takes away that color adjustment. Another helpful option if you're looking to incorporate that color and you're not looking to modify the specific tones in the image, you can use the saturation blend mode. This blend mode is strictly going to incorporate that color cast that is brought in with that curves adjustment. So I'll just make the curve a little bit stronger here and you can sort of see the difference. If I turn this up and on, really adjust that color down there within the scene. And let me just sort of showcase that uh, at wide here. But if we turn this up and on, really doing a great job of bringing in that blue sort of color into the bottom section. Now watch as I go back to luminosity. Now it's just modifying that tone there within the scene. So I just wanted to mention that just to sort of have you keep that in mind when you are modifying the curves filter because you can get a little bit extreme and it can adjust the colors a bit. And so the luminosity and saturation blend modes are really awesome for targeting either the tones or the colors. So let's just reset this here and I'll go to normal. And so you can see how easy it was to just incorporate contrast within your scene, but it's also just as easy to brighten things up. So let's say we're looking for more of a high key reflection and we want the top section and the bottom section to sort of have the same exposure. Well, we can brighten things up with the curves filter really easily by either dropping a point in our shadow tones and pulling up on those, or we can move that point to the midtones and just pull up on our midtones entirely to sort of match the look of the top and bottom of the photo. The great thing about the tone curve here in these instances is it, if you need a little bit more contrast, because you've pulled up on a specific tone, you can easily add in that contrast by just dropping down other points within that tone curve. So those are my five tips for modifying and adjusting water in your photography. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.